Good afternoon, Floss Tube. This is Lori M, textilist, and today is Friday, March. Let's look here. Today is my day off, so I have to look. I don't like to pay attention to the clock or the calendar on my days off. Today is Friday, March 9th, and welcome. Welcome back if you are a subscriber, and welcome if you are watching this for the first time. Um, so today I'm going to talk about whips. I have a ginormous haul. I'm going to go back and show the machine that I forgot to show last time <clears throat> in my sewing machine segment. Uh, we have a drawing for the owl bag, the owl project bag, and I think I have a couple of shout outs to do. So let's get started. Um, let's see, my whip. It is just a whip. There's no S on the end of that. I'm finding I really am a monogamous, monogamous, yes, monogamous stitcher. Um, I'm still working on Baby It's Cold Outside. I had posted a picture earlier this week on Instagram. I was that close to done. And as I got that close to done, I discovered that my trees were off and I had to unstitch them. And so I'm in the process of restitching them. I have uh, two and a half trees, I think, yeah, one, two, yeah, two and a half trees left to do, and a couple of snowflakes, and this puppy will be done. And uh, I, I will, I'm very excited about that because I really do want to get to work on a couple of my other projects. Um, Kinder Stitcher, Lisa Kinder Stitcher and I are going to be doing a, a Hoity Toity SAL. Um, so hashtag hoity toity SAL all together. Uh, hope to get started on that soon. And I'm going to try to branch out and be uh, a multiple project stitcher, but we'll see. So that is my one and only whip. Hope to get it done this weekend or soon. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is haul. This is going to be the longest part of the video because, um, well, because I've been shopping. I found uh, stash and load. Uh, actually, I've been kind of looking at it, but then uh, there was a couple of albums that came up recently that were had a lot of stuff in it that I really liked, and I got a little click happy. Um, and I also was recently at Acorns and Threads twice in a week, and so of course some things had to follow me home. And then I also had an order that came in from One Two Three Stitch, so I've got quite a bit to show you. Um. So my, my visit to 123 Stitch, one of them, I was looking for some the threads to kit up uh, this Christmas garden. This is my working copy of Christmas garden. It's a Blackbird's design. And um, I think it has five, five or six colors in it. Not a whole lot of colors. I wasn't really wild about the colors that it was stitched in. They looked pretty here on the picture, but when you look at them in person, they weren't quite the same. I think the main color, one of the main colors is called Calico Kitten, which I actually have. I love Calico Kitten, but it was way too pink for, for what I am looking for. So, oops. So the threads that I picked out, um, I did not go with Weeks Dye Works. I was looking for something that was going to be color fast. And so I, I looked across the aisle, so to speak, and I picked out gas colors that were similar and or met something that I would like. So here's the colors. Um, here's the hand dye that I'm going to be using. And these are the colors that I got. So we've got um, Briar Rose and Harvest Gold, Forest Glade, and Caramel Corn. I think that's all. One, two, three three, four, maybe only four colors, but they are really pretty. They're just, they're luscious. Let's see if I can get a good shot here with the glare. Um, I think this is going to turn out really nice. So I picked those up. <clears throat> That's part of my haul. Um, I'm just going to start going through this. Let's see. Oh, well at Acorns and Threads, I also picked up Heart and Hand by Brenda Gervais. Um, Lisa Kendra Stitcher is working on this. I think uh, Michelle Farm Girl is also working on this. I think Michelle is using a tin roof uh, for her, her fabric. Um, 
I'm not sure what Michelle's or what uh, Lisa Kinder Stitcher is going to be using, but I, uh, it calls for Dove. I really like Dove. I may use it or I may not, but um, I haven't kitted this up yet. But it's now going to go into my stash to pull from when I get through the bazillion other things that I'm working on. <clears throat> uh, the other one I found, a Acorns and Threads, is Summer at Cherry Hill. And that is uh, Brenda Gervais as well, I believe. Yes, uh, with Thy Needle and Thread. Uh, it has a lot of things that I really like. It's red. Um, it has a lot of reds, burgundies, etc. It's got pomegranates. It has a little beeskeep. Um, just there's there's so much that is so cute about this particular pattern. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to work on that. <clears throat> a couple of videos ago, I think Priscilla was working on this, and it really caught my eye. It is from La Dida. It's called Briar Rabbit. And let's see. There we go. Sort of. Um, you really can't see, um, how cute this, this pattern is. I am going to probably do it in some primitive colors. Um, I haven't pulled the colors to see, to see how they look, but it will probably be kind of a darker, muddy version of that. But I really like that. I don't have a lot of spring, um, type things. This may find its way into my list, um, of 2018 things to do. I only have one spring chart, so I may actually get this up and work on it. Well, also Acorns and Threads um, for the Pacific Northwest Stitchers Meetup. That happened, it happens the first Thursday of every month there in Portland, Oregon. And um, Stitchy Witch 42 was there. She had brought, she had found um, a frame and she had brought some fabric and was um, ha asking the shop to kind of help her out, put it together. And while she was there, she had this really pretty metallic -y dark blue. Uh, she's going to be doing um, a Christmas uh, piece where Santa is kind of flying over, you know, a midnight sky. But while there, Lisa at Acorn and Threads brought out some fabric that was really similar and was showing it to the rest of us. And part of it had to come home with me, and you'll see why. So this is... Uh, PTP linen is a 32 count. It's called Crystal Phantom. And look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? So it looks like the Aurora Borealis. Um, it's, it's just simply stunning. There's a lot of midnight blue. There's a little bit of green. Um, the way that the hand dye was done, you can kind of see we've got some, um, some markings in here. There's, I think some purple. Yeah, there's some purple down here and it's on this super sparkly and it is so pretty here. I'll back up so you can kind of get a better, to me, that looks like a galaxy picture. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with this. I have something in mind, which will probably involve some, uh, planetary stuff. So we'll see. I, I think I might just kind of branch out and do a little designing and see if I can chart that up. Uh, that's a way in the, the distant future in a galaxy far, far away um, stitch. But things like this don't come around very often. They're one of a kind. And I, I thought it needed to come home with me. So it did. I think there was another half, but um, I believe Stitchy Witch 42 reported on her last video that the shop had said they had sold all of it. But uh, you can probably go back. Like I said PTP. Um, I'm not sure what that is. PTP Linen 32. I'll figure it out and I'll I'll, I'll link it down below. Um, this chart I got in my one two three stitch order. It is um, by Lavender and Lace, and it is the Mother's Tree. I had seen. I caught the last end of the video that Pam and Steph did, where Pam had stitched this, and it it's just stunning. It is. The coolest idea. Um, this basically goes up the mother, the maternal sign of a lineage. Um, and I do genealogy in my free time when I'm not stitching or quilting or working or, or other stuff. Um, I haven't done it in a while, but I really like doing it. And I have some genealogy. Um, I didn't do it actually. I was able to tap into something uh, tap into a family tree that had already been done, but I have one that goes back quite far, so I don't know how far back I'm going to go. But my plan is is to decide that, and I will stitch all the way down myself, my daughter, and my granddaughter. And then my plan is to give this to my granddaughter 
um, with space down below, um, maybe on like a, I don't know, a scroll frame. I, I have an idea of what it's going to be on um, so that she can have it and take it and stitch. So uh, she's seven. Um, she's already started stitching things. I, I talked to her the other day and, and I, I had given her a sewing machine and I asked her if she preferred working on the sewing machine or hand stitching and she said she likes hand stitching. Um, I actually get to go visit her next week. I have the week off. My daughter and son-in-law are going to be out of town and I get to spend a whole week with my granddaughter Sam's parents and it, I plan to do a week of stitching and sewing and relaxing and laying in the sun. Like I said, they're in Tucson uh, and spending a lot of time with my granddaughter. Plus, um, Tucson, I discovered, is about an hour, 15, hour and a half away, or 15 minutes or hour and a half away from uh, Tucson is Mesa and the attic. So I'm going to go visit the attic. I cannot wait. Uh, this is a, a stash unload purchase. Um, there was like several of these charts, several of the wordplay charts. I was not quick enough on the button. I thought I was, but me and one other person apparently um, answered literally at the same time I looked at the, the timestamp and we did and, and she won and I didn't, but I got one of them. And uh, this one is the August wordplay has uh, bee balm, herbs, sunflowers, thyme, bee skeep rosemary little sunflowers here just my speed i love this so um i'm not sure how big this is let's see it is i don't have my glasses on i can't see oh uh 129 by 70 so not very big compared to the last two pieces i i did and it's a lot of words so i, I may put that in my rotation this year as well some of the things I got from um, Stash and Load were already kitted up. Uh, this one is uh, Ink Circles. It's called Spring Snow. We are having a lot of that around the country this year. We had some here in the Pacific Northwest. And I don't know if you call it Spring so Snow there in the east. They're definitely getting snow. Um, it's almost spring. I think spring is on the 20th I think that's what it is anyway so this is spring snow it has deer in it I really like deer the uh, linen that came with it is dove one of my favorites this is a 30 count dove and then these are the threads I think they're all gassed uh, these are the threads that came with it I think they're really pretty let's see I don't think you can see all of them there we go isn't that lovely? So one of my finds on Stash Unload. Another find on Stash Unload. Um, I liked this. I bought it twice. I, I, I had forgotten I had it in my one, two, three stitch. And I ended up buying it already kitted up on Stash Unload. It is poinsettias and pines. It's a blue ribbons design. Uh, again, it's got the really cool stags. It's got a Christmas theme. Um, came with. A 36 count mocha Edinburgh and these are these are the threads there is a ton of threads here so the person who put this on stash and load I don't recall who I bought this from but uh, this was a very generous purchase uh, meaning that it not only had all of the call for threads but I think it had several extras uh, not only extras that are duplicates, but also extras where maybe that person wasn't quite sure which color they wanted to use, so they had all of it. So about twice as much thread as it actually calls for. Lucky me, that was really cool. And again, they're just simply stunning. Okay, so there's that. Bunches more, hang on. Um, let's see. I got two that are needlework cases, plus one of them has a sampler in it. Um, this is the Acorn Sampler sewing case. Let's see the glare here. So it has a sewing case, it has a key fob, it has a sampler. It's really pretty. Um, these are With My Needle by uh, Designs by Ellen Chester. And then this one was 
flowers for Lily. Again, it's a needlework case. I, I like needlework cases. I don't think you can have too many needlework cases or too many, key, uh, not key fobs, uh, you could use them for key fobs, or too many scissor fobs. Um, so I think these are really pretty. Um, I also re uh, purchased from Stash and Load, I was so lucky to get this, Primitive Hair Red Riding Hood. That's That's very, very cool. Not sure what I'm how I'm going to finish that. Probably not framed like that. Probably frame something differently. So I got that. I got um, Not Forgotten Farm. There was uh, let's see what's it called? Jingle all the way. It's super cute. It's like a primitive uh, little little piece there. Uh, I think this is part of my one, two, three stitch and part of my Prairie Schooler collection. I saw this on Pam's wall behind her and I just fell in love and I was so excited when they re-released this. Um, I agree with everyone else. I'm a little, well, maybe more than a little disappointed at the paper that they printed these on. I mean, they didn't have to be the cardstock that it used to be, but these, these are kind of Flimsy. I think I actually, when I make my working copies, it's, it's going to be on heavier paper than what this is because this is not going to hold up. Not through a piece that big. Um, I got this one from Kathy Barrick. It's called Adam and Eve. It's definitely, at least to me, it's, it's arts and crafts looking. Um, I like the colors on that. Um, so that's going to be in there. Um... Let's see. Oh, here's the one I wanted to show. So I was watching the Jonah Kelly show, which I really, really, really love. Um, Kelly had showed, I think this was two or three videos ago. She showed a pillow that she had purchased at a craft fair and it was cross stitched. And, um, I, I looked at that and I was like, Oh, that is so cool. So it has a barn, it has a house. Um, it has raspberries and the raspberries were beaded. And so I went on online and I just used some keywords to find it. It's called Raspberry Bramble. It's Cinnamon Heart Needleworks. And so uh, these parts were beaded and it was just simply stunning. If you haven't watched that particular video, go look on the Joan and Kelly show, I think at least two back and, and you will see this and it, it's so pretty. So I did find it. I got this one actually off of eBay, so this was a single purchase. Um, from Another one from Cinnamon Heart Needleworks that I got from a different purchase. That was raspberries. This is cranberries. Again, really cute. I love that. I like, I'm not much of a tea towel fancy type thing, but you know what? That's kind of cute. I think I might do something, uh, maybe it'll, not, not a tea towel, maybe it will be like a bread uh, basket towel or um, a placemat or something to put under a basket. This one I really like. It's called Harvest Moon Cottage. It's Elizabeth's Needlework Designs. Uh, goes with my uh, fall, October stuff. I'm not super wild about the colors on this, um, but it has all the good bone structure of the pattern. I believe I'll probably make the house darker. I might do a red house. I might do uh, just something dark and maybe change the roof to white. I'm not sure, but um, I'll be using darker, richer, more saturated colors on this, but I really like that. Big Flower Sampler by La Di Da. This also uh, is in keeping with the arts and crafts theme um, of stitching that I want to do for uh, a particular wall in the house for arts and crafts looking stuff. Again, uh, most of that was from Stash and Load. I, I, I went crazy. Um, fall fobs, heart in hand, pumpkins, and uh, wishing be merriness. This I think was part of my one, two, three stitch. Um, this is a homespun elegance pattern. I will probably do it just like it shows here. I like the pillow, I believe this is gonna be a good size pillow. Uh, well, maybe not too good size. It looks like it's going to be about 
10, 6 by 10, but it'll be nice. It'll look up nice on a couch. Uh, another prayer schooler that I picked up, Winter Wind. Uh, again, we'll go in my, oops, there we go, go in my rotation. Not this year, probably, uh, next year of uh, prayer schooler stuff. Um, let's see, my hair clip's falling out. Um, this, uh, this was my unicorn that I talked about last time, or one of my unicorns. It, it finally came, and we'll, we're going to get back to unicorns later in the, the segment when we talk about the, the drawing. Um, this is Thank You, Sarah Tobias by Blackbird Designs. Uh, the, what I really wanted out of this, there's several, several different um, projects in here, but what I was particularly interested in was the needle case. And so I think that's a, a roll-up needle case, and... I, I've seen it done. It's really, really pretty. This is an out-of-print chart. I was super fortunate to to find it and to find it at a reasonable price. I think I mentioned last time uh, they you can see them on eBay for eighty or ninety dollars. Um, I, I got it for a lot less than that. So and it can, it's it's in pristine condition. I don't think it was ever used. So I was super happy to see that. Some of my stash was not necessarily cross stitch, but definitely cross stitch related because you know I love me some project bags. Um, I was with my husband. Um, the reason I got to go to, to Acorns and Threads an extra time or just twice in one week was my husband had found a truck. He was looking for a truck. He found one in Portland. We went down to go get it, and I was like, I will drive you down, but I want to stop at the Acorns and Threads. And so that's what we did. And then where we parked to meet the, the person to, to buy the truck was in the parking lot of the craft warehouse. I have never been to craft warehouse. Um, so of course I had to go in and check it out and they had some cute fabric. They have one, uh, a, a couple of pieces of fabric that I bought. I'm not going to show quite yet because they are going to be project bags and they're kind of a surprise, but this one I will show you. Um, I think I'm going to make project bags for my granddaughter with this and I have enough to make a couple more but look at this is that not just super cute now my granddaughter is blonde she doesn't have dark hair but I just thought this was darling and uh, I think I have to make one for her and one for me we'll have matching project bags it might be something we work on together while I'm there and this is the coordinating fabric I got to go with it it's not quite a um, uh, ticking fabric. It's it's really just a cotton and it's a stripe, but it's kind of a cream and black and it's super cute. The uh, the company that put this out is called Santoro uh, uh, dash London dot com, and it's called the Gorgeous, but it's spelled G O R J U S S collection, and it looks like it came out in two thousand sixteen, but really cute. So had to share that with you. I think one of the things I showed last time was the fabric for a bag that I had not created yet. Um, it's done. The, the bag is for Needleworker and uh, this is how it turned out. So the background fabric is really dark but it is again let's see it says like quilt and log cabin. It's, it's quilting related and it, it looks like a very dark vintage sewing uh, ephemera. And then the fabric for the rest of it is this really pretty, uh, it has birds, flowers, it's kind of pinks and mauves and mauvey browns, etc. And then I think my favorite part of the bag is the zipper pull. And I bought that, I bought that a couple of years ago, but I think I got it at Michael's. And I believe the last time I was there, they had that zipper pull. So I thought it was appropriate for the needleworker um, chart. Okay, let's see what else do we have. So that was my massive, massive haul. Um, actually, it wasn't all my haul. It was the pertinent haul. I, I have some more, but you know, we're getting excessive here. So I think that was all I was willing to fess up to. 
the next thing I have on the list is the machine that I forgot to show you last time. So uh, what I showed you last time was a black featherweight. Uh, as I mentioned, featherweights started out in the 30s. Uh, they're very lightweight. They're singers. They're made by Singer. Um, and then about 1964, um, there may be early ones. I'm not sure when they started making the white ones, uh, but they did. And, and that's what I'm going to show you now. And this one is what I call my birth year featherweight. I was not born in 1964, but they didn't make featherweights or they didn't um, manufacture them and or distribute them uh, in the year that I was born. Actually, they probably did. They just, they aren't dated that way from, from the Singer company. So without further ado, here is my white featherweight. This is the case they came in. It is definitely a early 60s. Uh, green. I'm not sure what you would call it. It's it's actually pretty close to the green that was very popular in the 20s uh, in a cream color case. They are not as, the cases are not as um, fancy as, as the ones that came earlier. They don't have the trays. They don't have the extra accessory things. Um, but the machines, they're, they're cute. They're they're, they're pretty cool. So here's my machine. One of the biggest changes is that they built the plug in, which that was different in, in the earlier machines, in the, the black machines. These, the color of this is called celery. It looks white. This one, particularly mine, is very white looking. Um, I saw one a couple of weeks ago in Value Village that was really, really celery colored. So their dye lot for their paint wasn't... Um, consistent so they kind of had a, a range of colors anybody looking at this would call it white they wouldn't call it celery badges are different it's more of a sticker uh, and not a metal badge like it was on the on the the black machines the face plate does not come off um, like the ones in the black machines and it's totally different it's it's got a nice you know mid-century design and it's it's just part of it so Again, these are just a little bit more than 11 pounds. Uh, you can see I'm holding it, you know, just one hand, and they fold up. Very cute to take to um, retreats, very lightweight to take to retreats. Super strong, um, very dependable. These machines will probably outlast me. Um, so there's the machine I didn't show. So there's the machine segment. So what else do we have? Oh, we have the drying. Yes, the drying. So let me move this out of the way. Let me find my paper. Okay. Sorry for that. You really didn't need my, my face in your face. Okay, so I had 99 people who commented on the last video who were interested in the, the drawing. And the drawing is for a bag like this. So it's the owl bag. It has some uh, nice little features on behind the owls. It's a little macabre. Um, the back of it is, um, I'm not even sure what it says. I never looked. Let's see. It's in French, so it doesn't matter. But it's it's writing, and it's on this nice black chalkboard-looking type of fabric. And a little doodad. So this one is mine, but the person who is winning a, a bag like this will receive something that looks like this, probably with a little different charm. So here's my list. 99 people. And then my husband wrote a number on this closed sticky note. And I will open the sticky note, and let's see who won. And this sticky note is really sticky. Am I going to get this open? Oh, good golly. Suspense is killing me. Okay. Oh, here we go. So, the number is 65. And 65, hold on. Where's my glasses? Okay, we're gonna have to go like this. 65, Quilting Stitcher. Quilting Stitcher, you are the winner of the Owl Bag. Congratulations. 
So if you can uh, comment down below, I'll comment on your comment, but if you can comment down below and give me your email address, or you can go on Textilis on Instagram and message me and give me your information, I will send out your bag. It will probably be at least a week, a week and a half, because I am going to be out of town, but um, I will get this to you as soon as I can, and, and many congratulations. Thank you for um, subscribing. Thank you for playing, and this was really fun. So the, the thing I asked everybody to comment on um, when they commented was to tell me what your unicorn was. And I did do a little bit of statistics to kind of share with you the information I got. So Lady of the Flag, no surprise, that was probably the number one um, unicorn that people were looking for. Some of them said they could find it, but they they weren't finding it. Oops, ouch. They weren't finding it in uh, at reasonable cost. So, you know, if, if you're out there and you have Lady of the Flag and, and you're done with it, you know, consider passing the stash, consider putting it out there so somebody else can can um, uh, use that and participate. I did hear that there is a possibility that that particular one will be re-released, but I'm not sure. The second one um, was Thomas Kincaid's Tangles, or Tangled, one or the other, Tangles or Tangles. Um, I had to go look at that. I, I, I was not familiar with that particular one. And oh my gosh, that is really pretty. I can see where that, why, why that would be uh, people's unicorns. The third thing that was the unicorn for other people, this really tickled me. And it was featherweights. Um, featherweights can be a unicorn. They can be quite expensive, but I'm telling you, just just watch. Uh, go go in places you wouldn't normally see it. Go to garage sales. Um, going to Craigslist. Sometimes people uh, will will list them as a small sewing machine, or they'll just list it as a sewing machine or a black sewing machine. Don't don't pass those up if you're really really searching for one. Um, uh, we have offer up here. Look and offer up. I think the last two that I bought, I bought off of offer up, and uh, and you still do find them in antique stores. The very first, or no, I'm sorry, the second one that I bought, I bought in an antique store, and I bought it for close to I think it was about hundred and fifteen dollars, and it is in mint condition. So you can find them. Just just put that you know those good vibes out to the universe. Tell them you're looking for one, and it will find you. Okay, so we've done our my whip, not whips. We've done my whip, my haul, the machines, the drying. Oh, I have some um, shout outs. And I guess the first one I don't want to shout. I wanted to call. Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. I don't remember what you called it. But the first one I want to mention is, oh, that's it. Uh, a kind mention, something like that. Flannel Jammies Farm. If you have not watched Flannel Jammies Farm yet, you need to go watch it. It is really, a, they're great videos. Uh, she is a multi-crafter. She has, um, uh, she keeps bees, which is really cool because I want to keep bees when I retire. Um, just, just a very pleasant, pleasant woman, uh, lovely lady. Jan Hicks is another one. She gave me a really awesome shout out um, in one of her last videos. Uh, Jan is also a multi-crafter. She knits a lot. And she also, in her last video, posted just these gorgeous, gorgeous pictures of the beach. So you need to go check her out. Uh, so good photographer as well. Joan and Kelly. Joan and Kelly show. Love Joan and Kelly. Uh, Joan, of course, is uh, made by Mama Joan. She does beautiful, beautiful um, uh, project bags. And um, Kelly is also a quilter. And, uh, they, you know, they're both stitchers. Um, I like watching them. They do some live videos. Those are really fun. And uh, I really want to go play in, uh, in Kelly's studio. I, I'd like to do a studio day with, with those two. Yvonne Night Owl Stitcher, I love watching her videos. Um, she's going to be doing some project bags too. She got some great fabric. Go check her out. And the Bee Girls, the Bee Sisters, Olivia and Elena. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I I think I started watching Elena pretty close to the time she started doing floss tube, and then um, then I found Olivia, and then I watched them both. The segment they did for the holidays, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's pretty darn cool. Um, they're just, they're awesome, awesome girls. Um, 
Elena has a bakery. She posts stuff on, on Instagram that I'm sure I gained five pounds just looking at it. It's, it's so cool. So go check them out. Uh, Melly Ellie Stitcher. I'm not sure I may have mentioned her last time, but it doesn't matter if I didn't. It, she's worth mentioning again. Please go check out Melly Ellie Stitcher. She's got some great stuff. And um, homesteading on, or, let me see, yeah, homesteading on the home front. Uh, so these people that I've just named, they are people that I've been watching recently. I don't have a lot of time, so I uh, I try to stay focused on, on a few. These are the ladies that are inspiring me. Um, they, they, they go to sleep with me at night. I am usually falling asleep at night watching the videos. Um, I watch them on my breaks at work. Um, they're just great. So please, please take some time and go out and visit some of these other gals. And, uh, I think, I think that's all I have today. Um, yes, that's all I have today. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me this afternoon. Um, it will be probably at least another couple weeks. It might be a little bit longer. I'm not sure <clears throat> until my next video. As I mentioned, I'm going to be out of um, out of town for a week. I'm going to be hanging out with my granddaughter. I might shoot some video there. I might not. I'm not sure. But I really look forward to uh, seeing you next time. And until then, uh, speak your peace and have a great day.